Hi, I'm Steve Lapoideman. My wife and I have been living abroad for about uh, 10 years. We spent uh, almost a decade in Asia and we have been living on, in Peru for the last four years. One year in Arequipa and the last three on the north coast in the small town of Huanchaco outside of Trujillo. Over the next few minutes I'm going to just give you a little overview of the country as a whole. Uh, when you talk about Peru with most people, the first thing that comes up of course is Machu Picchu. But there are a lot of other things to do in the country and see in the country other than archaeological sites and that's what I will touch on over the, uh, the next few minutes. Anyway, where is the country? It's located on the west coast of South America. It stretches from Ecuador in the north to Chile in the south. The coastline is about 1500 miles long. Uh, if you picked up Peru and stuck it on top of North America or in the States, it would basically stretch from Seattle to San Diego. That gives you kind of an idea of, uh, of how long the country is. Um, on the east, it's bordered by Bolivia, Colombia and uh, Brazil. The population is about 32 million. That's uh, close to Canada's population. I think Canada has about 36 million. Uh, 75, it's 75 percent urban. Um, the median age is about 28 years old, so it's quite a young population. That's almost a decade younger than uh, Canada and the U.S. The capital city of Lima is located about almost exactly halfway along the coast. The other two big cities are Arequipa and uh, Trujillo. Uh, Lima has a population of about 11 million. Arequipa and Trujillo are both approaching 1 million, probably and somewhere between 800,000 and a million if you, if you look at the uh, surrounding areas of both places. Getting to and from the country is pretty simple. Uh, most flights pass directly uh, through the International Airport in Lima and it's also the hub for all the most almost all the domestic flights. There's very few flights that you can go that go directly from one city to another. They almost all you almost always have to pass through Lima. Uh, the other way of traveling around the countryside is, uh, in fact, the most popular way of traveling around the country is uh, long distance bus. And these long distance bus companies uh, offer a lot of great amenities. A lot, there's a lot of overnight uh, trips. They have fully reclining seats, they have entertainment centers, uh, meal service, the drivers switch out every four or five hours, and the speeds are governed. So it's actually a very safe way to travel if you're using the top four or five companies. So another way of getting around in the cities is, uh, and, and the towns would be taxi. Taxis are quite inexpensive. We rarely have paid more than five dollars for a taxi to go almost anywhere in this area and even in Lima you're going to rarely spend more than ten dollars for, uh, for a taxi ride. So five or ten dollars is kind of the average, average charge. Um, in terms of other ways of getting around, collectivos is probably the most common way for just inside the cities and, and towns and between small towns. Collectivos can be small vans, they can be buses, they can even be a private vehicle in some cases. But usually they're, they're a small van that fits eight or ten people. And for these you're never going to spend more than one or two dollars at, at the most. And you can go quite a distance for a couple of dollars. And if you look at the country as a whole, you can divide it up into three main parts. You have the, the long coastal desert, as I said, that stretches from Ecuador to Chile. You have the Andes Mountains down the center. And on the other side of those, you have the Amazon uh, rainforest. The desert coast is home to some of the best surfing in the world. It's also home to the Nazca Lines, which uh, most people have heard of in, in the south. And also we have the highest, one of the, some of the world's highest sand dunes in, uh, in the desert. In the, in the southern part of the country. If you throw in the, the Coca Canyon and a couple of other very deep canyons, Coca Canyon is twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. It's, out, it's about two or three hours from Arequipa. And the Andes Mountains and the uh, rainforest, it's a real mecca for outdoor enthusiasts in, uh, throughout the country. Okay, looking at the weather, we have 28 of the world's 32 uh, climates and of course the climate is directly related to the terrain. So when I talk about the climate, just remember that the climates are reversed. January and February is the peak of our summer and July and August is the peak of our winter. There's the three, as I said, the three major parts of the desert, the mountains and the rainforest. If we look at the coastal desert, uh, in general the, the hottest 
place you're going to find or the warmest place on the coast is going to be the furthest north. So near the Ecuador border as you go towards the top you know 25 percent 30 percent of the of the coast it's going to be pretty warm and sunny year-round. Where we are in Huanchaco uh, a little further south but still north of Lima it's pretty sunny year-round. Temperatures range from 65 to 70 uh, but it's pretty pretty we get sun most days during the year winter and summer. Uh, it gets a little cooler in the winter but I would say the average temperature year-round is about 68 to 70 and there's usually sunshine in the winter as well and lots of sun in the summer. In Lima, in the summer, you have really nice, hot, sunny weather. Temperature can get quite warm in the summer, but in the winter, from Lima to all, and all points south, it's pretty socked in. You get a lot of uh, cloud cover, a lot of fog, and that's because of the icy cold Humboldt current coming up from the Antarctica and meeting that moist uh, air and you get all of that, that fog. So you can, be, you can be actually socked in for you know, five, six months out of the year. But the summers are very hot and sunny. Um, it's the reverse in the mountains. In the mountains, the rainy season is January, February, and the dry season is July and August, sort of the, so it's the exact opposite of, of here. Now I'm saying those are the peak months. Of course, it's going to extend in both directions from, from those months. Um, the rainforest, of course, is like any rainforest, hot, humid, rainy, pretty much year round. Okay, looking at government, it's a democratic republic. There is a president, there's a prime minister, there's a council of ministers. Uh, there's 25 regions, which are subdivided into 196 provinces. About 86% speak Spanish, the rest speak a variety of indigenous languages, including Quechua. Spanish is the official language, certainly, but anywhere the other languages are predominant or spoken, they are also official. So depending on where you are, you'll have a variety of official languages that are, that are out there. Uh, some of the more popular locations, uh, Lima, of course, is where most expats are located because of its size, because of the uh, job opportunities, but also because of the, the cultural life. You have a lot of art galleries, lots of museums, great restaurants, and so you will find the biggest concentration of expats in Lima. Other than Lima, the, probably the second most popular spot to find expats and to, to find people settling down would be Cusco and the Sacred Valley. There you have the Urubamba River, which, which travels or runs from Machu Picchu all the way to uh, Pisac. It's about 60 miles, uh, very rich, fertile uh, farm, farmland, and it's, it's surrounded by or bordered by you know, towering mountains, so it's a very scenic part of the country. Uh, it can, it's a very rural part of the country and it's well known for its archaeological sites, its artisans, lots of fine textiles, lots of other types of crafts and a lot of people that like uh, the countryside sort of migrate to that part, part of the country. Uh, Arequipa is another popular location. It's located in the south. It's, uh, it's sitting at about 7,800, 8,000 feet in altitude but the days are nice and sunny, probably more than 300 days of sunshine a year. Another spot is Trujillo, which is about 10 hours by bus north of Lima, or an hour, an hour and a half flight. Um, and then Huanchaco, which is very close, only 10 minutes away. So Huanchaco is uh, a coastal, Trujillo and Huanchaco, of course, are both on the coast. Huanchaco is a great little beach resort, very laid back, some of the best surfing in the country. Um, in the summer, as I said, the temperatures can be in the high 70s, but year-round temperatures are more like 65, 70 degrees, lots of sun. Um, Trujillo is a great little, great, uh, great little city, lots to do, lots of uh, culture, and they have some nice uh, festivals during the year. Moving further up the coast towards the Ecuador border, you have Mancura. Mancura, again, is another beach resort town, has probably the nicest beach in, in the country along with Punta Sal which is a small residential community only 15 minutes away and I would say that's probably the nicest beach in, uh, in Peru. So Mancura is known as a party town but the partying really is only in one small section of the town and it doesn't take much to get away from that. There are many quieter areas in the area that you can live in uh, that uh, that to escape to escape that. 
So that kind of gives you a, an overview of the country. I hope you have a, a little bit of a better picture of Peru in general. And uh, if you want more information, more detailed information, you can click on the link below, which will take you to the article, which talks about many of the same things I just discussed.